my mom would put me in a frilly dress, I'd get to a party, I'd rip it off, and then I'd be like Donnie from the Wild Thornberries, just running around with ah! My name is Els, um, I am originally from Sri Lanka. Uh, my family's burger, and I was born in Australia. I'm a harpist, a producer, a singer, a part-time dancer, part-time mermaid, a little activist here or there. <laughs> I do many things. <laughs> The word burger actually means citizen or townsperson and it's originally a, a Dutch word. It's basically people who have been mixed with various uh, European settlers that came in Sri Lanka. It's a complex kind of identity. <laughs> Being burger, I always felt like I was kind of like a foreigner or something, even though I don't really fit that image, you know. Within the burger culture, there's so many different shades of people and a lot of burgers are kind of traditionally meant to be fair skinned and uh, look a particular way. So I always felt a little separate from the burger community, but I also felt separate from like Singhala, Tamil, like people that were in Sri Lanka. There were many things, I guess, as a child that I practiced and I did that um, wasn't seen as being like girly or ladylike or whatever and there was a constant rhetoric in my family being like you know Natasha like you know you're not like that's not what girls do as a child you have somewhat of a freedom before you hit puberty to explore all these facets of your being and I remember when you know uh, my body started to change um, there was an instant policing of my body like okay you know you need to get your nails done let's you know get your eyebrows done for me it's there was definitely at that point of like feeling like wow everything's trying to kind of cage me in to this particular mold and i just don't fit that you know i think for me in the last few years um I've started to realize that all the various terrains of my personality and my being that hasn't otherwise found a place in the straight world has found a place in the queer world. And I'm, I don't see them as separate, but I do see that what queer is, is a space for you to explore yourself, to be radically honest, to say I feel sad. But what does queer mean? It means like the various shapes and a, a tree branch, like you know, it's not a straight line. And I think that's how I feel is like, I feel like this crooked tree that has all these different shapes and, and nodules and, and carved out parts. It means freedom. You know, in Avatar, when um, uh, the the main character has to pick their like drag flying dragon thing. I feel like that's kind of how instruments are for musicians. I was like trying the piano, I was trying the guitar, I was trying the gatabere, which is a traditional drum in Sri Lanka. I was doing all of the things, and then I went to see this kora player, Timani Diabate, in Australia. And the whole time I was just sobbing and crying while listening to this instrument. It just had this incredible effect on me. And in that moment, I knew that that was kind of the sound that I needed to include in, in my writing. So I went to a workshop in Australia and I built my own harp from scratch and I'd never played a harp before. I literally stayed at this beautiful property for eight days with this old man. Like every single day, I would spend like 10, 12 hours in the workshop like carving the wood and sanding it and gluing it and stringing it. And then I had a harp. So it was conceived of by me. The video was shot by a close friend of mine, Maisie. It was a very collaborative project in the sense that I invited some dancers from the queer community in Sydney to join me and everyone contributed to that. The song itself was about abandonment from, from people that were closest to you, such as your friends, in the aftermath of 
a traumatic experience. I think the hard experiences in life kind of take you on the most incredible journeys and kind of bring you to the most untouched parts of yourself. And so I wrote this song, Dark Room, about that feeling of being left in a dark room. And it was like the ultimate act of solidarity and friendship, you know? I think I love my nose. <laughs> I feel like everyone's born with this kind of nose and then it grows out into something else but my nose kind of stayed the way it was when, it, when I was born. My nose just kind of feels light. So yeah, that's my favorite part of my body. Besides my butt, I like my butt too. I think for me, it's all about doing it for yourself first because I think we find ways of surviving, um, you know, and, and creating uh, ways and means in which we can exist in that realm. I think if you go out into the music industry, into any arts industry saying, I'm doing this so that I can be famous, so I can be wealthy, so I can be loved, um, the chances are is there's going to be a lot of disappointment chasing that. Do your art for you first, you know, make sure that it's fulfilling you as a medicine and as a form of therapy and everything else that comes out from that is a bonus. I think it says to me, live in this body, you know, like live in this skin, like come alive in this brown, glowed up body, um, which is what I'm all about. <laughs> my name is Els and I live tinted.